We're talking this morning over Skype webcam to Jufikar Ali Manik. He's a leading investigative journalist in Dhaka, Bangladesh, at the Daily Star, one of Bangladesh's leading newspapers. Manik and I worked on a story recently in Bangladesh about a bribe that Siemens Corporation had given to a corrupt minister named Aminul Haq. And as it turns out, Aminul Haq had been patronizing a violent extremist group called JMB. So Manik and I traveled all over Bangladesh talking to victims of this group and, and family members who had lost people to this group. Manik, what was, what was it like when you learned that Aminul Haq had finally been, that he'd finally surrendered? He'd been in hiding for two and a half years and all of a sudden he, he pops up out of nowhere. What happened? Well, he surrendered in the first week of this month before the court, and the court sent him jail. Now he is in prison in Dhaka. Okay, and so then, then all of a sudden he, he just appears out of nowhere? I mean, he just, he walked himself to the court, he just turned himself in? Why? I think he surrendered before the court just because of he thinks that he will get bail from the higher court like the other politicians who were in hiding and returned Bangladesh, obtained bail and then got released. So he expects the same fate for him. This is a pretty sensational case. You have an international company, a huge company, admitting that it paid millions of dollars in bribes to different officials, one of whom was Aminul Haq. Aminul Haq has then patronized a terrorist group that killed dozens of people in Bangladesh and tortured hundreds of people. How serious do you think the government is, is taking this, this case? The present government, some of the ministers also said that they will go after the patrons of the militants. But besides that, we saw the same commitment actually from the caretaker government. The caretaker government said the same thing that the, they will go, they would go after the patrons of the militants. But the, we didn't see anything, any any move from the caretaker government to take action or the legal steps against the patrons. Bangladesh is is one of the largest Muslim countries in the world. It has about 150 million people, and 90 percent of them are Muslim. How much sympathy do you think there is for groups like JMB in Bangladesh? Is it like Pakistan or Afghanistan, where, where maybe a large percentage of the population is sympathetic? No. Th this is not the reality, actually. Very, very small group actually got involved with the militancy in Bangladesh. But the problem is some influential people, influential politicians, they patronize them. That's the main problem. But the ordinary people, the general sentiment is not in favor of the militancy. Monik, we, we met with a lot of people in, in Russia he, who were uh, direct victims of torture of this terrorist group or they, were, they had lost a family member to this group. Maybe we could just take a look quickly at that clip. <laughs> You've been watching this, this menace of this terrorist group for years and uh, explode in Bangladesh over the years. What's it like for you when we're meeting with someone like that who's, been, who's lost a son? Personally, I feel very bad. Because I think if anyone commit any offense, if anyone is criminal even, why don't people go to court or police to bring him into the book? There is no way to take any action by anyone for any wrongdoing. I want yeah. I wanted to talk to you now, Monik, a little bit about the, the mutiny. Um, when I was in Bangladesh, I, uh, you know, the day after I arrived, there was this, this terrible event happened. Army soldiers within the border patrol suddenly mutinied against their officers and wiped out about 50 officers. It was a terrible tragedy for the whole country. And since then, there have been all these rumors about whether or not JMB, the, the terrorist group, had infiltrated uh, this border patrol, this security force, and launched this attack. And, what, what do you think? I mean, is there, is there actually evidence that this, this was the result of a terrorist group doing this? There is a question of infiltration in the Bangladesh border force. So 
some people might have some old plan to do something inside the force. I mean, it seems that the government, you know, cracked down pretty hard on JMB. They hung seven or six of their leaders. They have been arresting this group. If anyone had a motive to to strike back at the country, wouldn't it be JMB? Well, actually, J JMB, uh, you know, the, the, their main goal is to establish the Sharia law, the Islamic rule in the country. The case against the Bangla Bhai that actually uh, hanged them, we came to know that they had planned to uh, do something against the army. So I cannot rule out that they right, so might saying, have some other plan. You're saying that, that it, would, it came to light that JMB had a plan to retaliate against the army for killing its leaders. Yes, they had that plan. Now that Aminul Haq is in jail, do, do you feel safe? Do you, are you worried at all about your, your own safety? In 2007, I had one investigative report on the patronizers, actually, who patronize militancy and GMB. So Aminul Haq's name actually came in my story. Definitely, he is not happy with that story. He should not be happy. And you know that his brother threatened me over phone. If he wants, he can do anything against me. I'm not scared. You know, this is part of our profession. So we, we journalists actually, when we do our work, we do considering all the risks. There's much more to explore on our website. Discuss the world and tell us what you think of our stories from a small planet at pbs.org slash frontline world. There's much more to explore on our website. Discuss the world and tell us what you think of our stories from a small planet at pbs.org slash frontline world.